Hello everybody, I'm here for the Game Channel, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club, where in the last episode, we uh, we learned about Sayori's depression that she's been dealing with for a lot of her life, apparently, and basically, we had no, re no reason to believe that anything was wrong with her. She's always happy-go-lucky, really, in person when other people are present, uh, but we basically found out that she's more interested in making other people happy than ourselves, so, yeah, we also found out why she's late all the time as well, Due to our depression or wouldn't actually get up and face the day having no reason to do so but yeah let's just get let's get back into this before long the whole kitchen is a mess we're baking right now spoons dirty bowls flour spilled fluid spilled fluid what have you been doing to him plastic bags are strewn about every countertop the mixer the mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once so we've had to do it several times meanwhile aunt Natsuki is babysitting all my movements to make sure i don't mess up her precious bacon didn't hammer where did you put the food coloring the batter's going in the oven soon. So I need to fill the trays. Sorry, I've got a brew next to me. Uh, I think it's still in the bag next to the table. And if people are wondering what a brew is, it's just a cup of tea. Uh, not iron brew. What are you using it for? To colour the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different colour. That way, even if the flavours aren't different, everyone can pick their favourite. Ah, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Ah. Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so come on! I'm not putting any heart in this at all. Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what Nasuki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food colour into each. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like a bacon. Uh, like bacon is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if just looking at it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on the first day, huh? I recall that Suki proudly presented her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah, maybe I will use a food colour in then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food colouring. Yeah, let's get in there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh, the icing's still a little lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah, I'll just take a bit lot longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Next, she grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Next, she suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. You're icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I started to fight back, trying to itch my finger towards the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my fingers to reach the ice, and I triumphantly scoop some up with my fingers, just as Natsuki tugs with all of her might. Ah! Force Natsuki to pull me, cause me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Gross! You got it on my face! Whose fault is that? There's a big blob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Ah. He tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez, you know what? Take this. Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger towards my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before reaching my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Oh, we're getting so playful. This is so cute. Oh, this, that's just such a terrible word. Cute. Ugh. Ah, ha, ha, stop. Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know. Saying dumb things just to get the reaction out of me. I really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take next to his finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the ice and... But what? Did you seriously just... Ah, ah. Natsuki is surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Dunhamer, you really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me? Just like that. When did the mood turn to this so quickly? I... And so he gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Eh. I don't know where the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. Cuff. No wonder. You have the dirty tray in here, dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? Should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. So you use an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray off of the oven. She sits it on top of the stove. Another moment the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. 
The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads, but the moment has already been lost. I watch as Nick Fury slides the cupcake trays into the oven, and then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, that smells so good! The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling air fills the room. Look at how cute they all look. She probably shows off the different coloured cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. She hands me some plastic bags. I have those these nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. Oh god, flowers on cupcakes, no. We probably would be using it this time though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That was really thin, so you can make it. It makes stripes or other patterns, but you can also use the right stuff on a cake. Like happy birthday or whatever. Huh, I see. That gives me an idea actually. Eh? Well, it's a little literature. It's a literature event, right? We could make it more literature themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcake based on the word they like. Huh? Mm hmm? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. That's actually a really cute idea, so haha! Maybe I'm getting it from you. But what's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. We're not a school, nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. Well, well. Actually, his voice trails off. Same with you, eh? Did you say something? N n nothing Just just do the icing. And this okay picks up the pace and fastens the nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. That'll give me a chance to think about pulp before. So he quickly moves on. Shows me how to apply the icing, and then we get each get to work. When we're finally finished, that Suki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look at how pretty they are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Uh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but my dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Ah ha ha! So you're always the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, we'd probably be down 10 cupcakes already, and she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we could have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Ah, oh, already? That's a shame. Sure, for working so slow. Should have brought, thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man, as usual, that's okay. Places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes more, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, then you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. Don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Ah, yeah. Again, think about the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I feel so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me, but at the point it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, and it's okay, he's all ready to leave. Feels like the afternoon, but I in the flash. More than that. Did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her, like I wanted? Well... I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. See you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki. Eh? What you said before about not always having this chance. It didn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. Should You showed me how fun baking can be. Like you whoa, warned, I think I said at the end. Besides from that, you can come over any time, okay? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere. Uh, do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely. Like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah. I want to spend more time with you. Jinhamer, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Natsuki suddenly gets close to me. Wait, Natsuki. Stand inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt, as if holding on to me. Her rose-coloured cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I felt it for a while now. So he jumps back. S Sayori, eh? Ah, ha hi, Denhamer. Sayori. Just now, we weren't. He he. It's okay, Denhamer. I just stopped by to say hi. Ah, well, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so. Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any more cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. Oh, we were totally gonna. Kiss there. I don't know why I'm in this on the fixed. Fuck's sake, man. Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori? I thought you didn't want to come over today. Aha, uh -huh, well, I tried to stay in my room, but my imagination would be really mean to me. Oh, oh no. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know. How much funny what happened with Natsuki. How close she got to her. 
It makes me really happy that we've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Denhamer? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much because she clearly likes the, the player. Everything hurts so much. It would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sorry, don't say that. It's true, Denhamer. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica's right about... Sayori? What I said before is true. I'm not going to let you just continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sorry, he looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder, reassure her. Sure. I'm scared, Denhamer. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I know we can start to like you too much. I did this to myself. Denhamer, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and, that's enough, Sayori. I don't want to hurt it anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand of mine. Do you remember how I said I always knew what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, so you nods. If you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give you. Oh, you always be my dearest friend. I'm going to go with the top option because I think they're the words she needs to hear right now. I love you. Eh? Yeah, those are my true feelings. There's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized this sooner. Spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends. Having fun with you every day, help me realize that you truly are the most important person to me. That's why I accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Did Hamer? Oh, suddenly Sayori so wraps her arms around me. Did Hamer? Is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori so in my arms and pull her closer. Oh, look at my hair. It's so fantastic. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Did Hamer. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this, Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why, even now, why wouldn't the red clouds go away? Not going away at all, Denhamer. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. It's all that matters right now. Well, okay, I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? Heh <laughs> What are you saying? I want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been, even if we really are a couple. Wow, just like, like, like that. I don't know if you can hear my clicks. Um, I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Dunhamer. Sorry, gazing at me once again, smiling sadly. Even I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sawyer means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I, I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. I feel like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. That's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. Say, but in reality, I never feel more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm ha having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feeling as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they are, we were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori's the most perfect person to me. I'll do whatever it takes to make a happy future with her. Okay, it's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I can start going to her place to wake her up, but she decided that it was a little too much. Meanwhile, preparations of the adventure should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Suki's already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Dude, Hamer, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. Must be one she prepared that have all the poems are performing. In the end, I found a rap poem online that I thought Monica would like, and I submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days of support, she'd try a little harder. I'd say that, but suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday, and I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I say it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But 
Maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Ahaha. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for it, Hamer. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... I stammer embarrassed. Did Saru tell her that about it that quickly? Over a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think, eh? Monica has been a fr as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laying on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. I think this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each one of your poems is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional look. I recognise the Tsukuri and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to so Yuri's poem. It's different from the ones she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh, flippin' heck. Let's just get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Oh, sh shit. Ah, what is this? I mean, the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Didn't hear me. What's wrong? Ah, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori. So, ah. Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? Oh, shit, the bed. Quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after her. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little a bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. And all she needs. And what I want to give her. Oh no, I reached Sayori's house. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Now yesterday I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing, uh, up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Inside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? She really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh, for f Jesus Christ. Okay, here it comes. She trace back, text for details. I can't believe she... Oh my gosh. Right, let's let me just find the game files. Oh my god, she that's what I was dreading. Right. Oh geez, I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a sec. I can probably fix this, I think. Actually, you know what? This probably would be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. Ahaha, well here goes nothing. Wait, I'm sorry, but an exception occurred. What the f- what is this? It says read me. I maybe should have read this earlier. What is this? Oh, that's just helping him out. Okay, that's fine. Oh, shit. Oh, Sayori. Oh, my God. What the hell? What the hell is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. So Yuri wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her that I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I should not confess to her. That's what Sayori needed at all. Wasn't what she needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming tho thoughts kept telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. I've just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and r remained friends with her like it always has been. And I could have prevented this. I knew I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I only had one chance and wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. 
Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. I still couldn't do what she needed for me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Oh, shh. End. End. That. Um. Oh my god, things are breaking, aren't they? I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her hands in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might get to herself. The girl is godly good my neighbour. She's a good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friends you'd never see yourself making today. We just got kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently. I would get tired of waiting up. If she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let's catch up to me. What is happening? It's just an already school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst. Means surrounded by couples and friends, groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I always walk to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I get to meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club. It's not like there would be any girls at it anyway. School day isn't ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack my things, I step blank the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. I really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start for the anime club. Did Hamer? Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Why is... My mind... My mind... Why is Monica here now? It's gonna turn out that she's like playing the game. Like she's, uh, you, uh, you probably don't understand what I'm saying, but let's just get on with this. Yeah, it ha has, Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we really talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica's probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, pathetic. Basically completely out of my league. And a maniac, possibly. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little, what do you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for supplies to use for my cl club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in a debate club, right? Ah, ha, ha, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. I feel like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity. And how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, ah, 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 it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can't give me anything. Reading, writing poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists the manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hayden Hamer. Any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favour? I won't ask you to join, but you could very least visit my club. It would make me really happy. Please? Um, well, I guess I have no reason to be refused. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? No, we can. Just say no. No, we don't want to go to the Literature Club again. We've seen what happened the last time, and now she's been erased from the game. She has physically been erased from the game. Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet in here, you know that. It's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I look for materials in our time. You're more important. Oh my gosh, she's crushing hard on us. Let's make her go. Um, control freak. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school. Timidly? Oh, come on, grow up here. A section of the school I really visit being generally used for third year classrooms and, uh, classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back, and I brought a guest with me. Eh, a guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. Well, anyway, welcome to the club, Denimer. Oh, we're just escaping in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki, girl with a sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. 
Uh, anyway, that is Natsuki, Natsuki, energetic as usual. And that is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. So she's the vice president now. Are you going to off her as well? Yuri, who appears compa uh, comparably more mature and timid, seems to have made a, uh, have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran to into Dene Himmer in a classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry, I didn't forget about that. I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Speaking of tea. Why don't you come and sit down, Dene Himmer? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feel awkward I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you don't really plan on coming here. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Electrical Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. What makes school events like festival that much more important? I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have really worked hard to find these two. Mia returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before sending down a teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess. Hehehe, <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, uh, that's not... And sorry, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Hamer, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. Marley quietly to myself, half joking. Next week, Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not, not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing like, Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favourites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story is such a foreign world. Is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in. It's obvious, by the way, her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. This is amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you off for a loop. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read horror book once. I definitely grasp for something I can relate to at the minimal level. This rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Ha ha ha, I expect that for you, from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Nasuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? But what? What gives you that idea? I left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give That Back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Yeah, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerability to showing even the dark, deepest reaches. Do you have any writing? Do you have any writing experience, too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help that you feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for you, Yuri. We all sit silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um, uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. 
I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Dunhamer? Hold on, there's still one problem. Hey, what's that? Now we've reached the most important topic, I've bluntly come up for. With what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join the club. When I come here, I've convinced myself by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at and I'm with my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, but. I'm sorry, I thought. Hmm. Uh, the girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Dunhamer. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. And I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. If we don't find one more before the festival, I, I'm defenseless against these You sucker! You sucker! All my days! How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? By simply saying the two-letter word, no. I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join a literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Dunhamer? Yeah. It's pretty fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean... I mean, if you'd really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. Dunhamer, I'm so happy we can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Ah, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over to me at once. Dunhamer, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hee hee hee. Yeah, yeah. Can I really express the cl uh, impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? Or do you feel anxiety welling up inside me? Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. Guess I'll be on my way then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart to the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Will I really be happy spending my every, every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right. I just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts writing a poem tonight. Oh, shit. I can't convince myself to go to therapy. I didn't mean to click. Oh. No, we've lost... Oh, she's been complete agonizing death dazzle dazzle bunny pure extraordinary kiss this is going to be kind of a mixture of um alone dark fear joy time massacre it's going to be a mixture of the feels. Anyways, guys, we are going to leave that episode there. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, that was that was a much, much darker episode. And I I am very... Um, I'm intrigued to see where this is going. Because obviously Sayori has been completely removed from the game. And we've started again. So something, something really weird is going on. Not sure what yet. But I have some, a funny feeling like Monica... Monica's got something to do with it, just because she's the one that replaced Sayori in, in the story. Well, anyways, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Cheer bye. Then now.